One of the great things about Silent Drive HD2 is the many ways it enables you to connect. It features a number of audio and MIDI interconnects that don't require adapters and connects to most major equipment. But how you connect defines what you can do, and not every connection method is applicable to every situation. So let's talk about what connections are available and what benefits they give you. Silent Drive HD2 features two major technologies that you can connect with. One is audio and one is MIDI. Now, audio connections can be used to transfer the playback signal of the piano as well as accompaniment to the CPU. MIDI is a bi-directional interface, so whether it's transferring your recordings from the piano to your iPad or a MIDI file you downloaded from the internet, you can use MIDI to connect directly to the playback engine of your piano. Let's first talk about the ways you can connect audio to the Silent Drive HD2. One of the first things you'll notice is the analog audio input and outputs. So the first one is audio in. This is used for a direct connection to a music player. Now that music player could be anything. It could be a wireless Bluetooth adapter, it could be a hard wire to your iPad, or it could even be the output of your whole house audio system, plugging directly into the audio in. Now the output is used for the speakers that are generally mounted on the piano. And these speakers will have the accompaniment that goes along with the piano. The last audio interface is record. Now this isn't used too often, but if you have an audio recording device and you want to capture the audio record signal of the piano, then you can record the output of this port and then play it back through the audio in and the piano will play back your recording. But that feature requires an optional record system like ProRecord or ProScan. Another way you can connect audio to the Silent Drive HD2 is through Bluetooth. Now the Bluetooth connection will show up as an audio device on your iPad or other music player and it's shown as Silent Drive BT Audio. This is the antenna. Make sure that when that's installed in your piano, it's not blocked or otherwise hindered. The last way you can connect audio is through the Toslink port. Now, this is a digital audio connection from your music player, like a Blu-ray player or a DVD player. And when you're connected via Toslink, the audio is always playing at maximum volume. So make sure you go into the PD Calibrate app to adjust your volume to an appropriate level. When you're connecting a music player or other audio device to the Silent Drive HD2, it's important to remember to select the audio source using the switch on the side. Now, this switch has a setting for each of the possible connections. Probably the most popular way to connect audio to your Silent Drive HD2 system is through Bluetooth. With an iPad, you simply go to your Bluetooth settings and select the Silent Drive BT Audio device, and your device will make a direct connection with the Silent Drive audio system. Make sure that you select the Bluetooth option with the audio selector switch. Analog audio is another way you can connect your devices to Silent Drive HD2. For example, let's say you have a Bluetooth adapter and it has an audio output. You can connect the audio output of that directly into the audio input of the Silent Drive HD2. Or maybe you have a whole house audio system and you want the audio output of that system to run through your piano. Simply take the output and connect it to audio in. The analog is probably the most flexible connection because it connects to almost everything. And again, just like with Bluetooth, remember to set the switch to the analog position so that your audio input is set to analog. The last option for connecting audio to your Silent Drive HD2 is Toslink. Now, Toslink is a digital connection and it goes from your music player, such as a Blu-ray or a DVD player, uh, directly as a digital signal into the Silent Drive HD2. Toslink is an optional feature and may not be installed on all Silent Drive HD2s. If your Silent Drive is equipped with one, simply connect the output of your Blu-ray player to the input of the CPU, use the audio selector switch to select Toslink, and you're ready to go. But remember with Toslink, 
Toslink devices always play at 100% volume, so you need to use the Piano Disc Calibrate app to set an appropriate volume level for the piano and accompaniment. Now let's talk a little bit about MIDI and how you connect that to your Silent Drive HD2. But first, uh, what is MIDI and why would you want to use it? MIDI is a digital protocol that connects musical instruments together. It tells a musical instrument how to play music. And so that's the technology that Piano Disc uses to play your piano. Now, when you're recording music, if you have a Pro Record or a Pro Scan, that's also a MIDI signal and connects via MIDI to the system. Now, there's several ways to connect MIDI. One is the standard 5-pin legacy connector. This is used less and less, but there's still some devices that use it, including wired USB adapters that have a 5-pin DIN output. There's also an option for USB MIDI. The Silent Drive HD2 has a built-in USB chip, and it can connect directly with a USB cable to your computer. So let's say you're using a music sequencer to compose a piece or even download music from the internet and play it back. You can connect directly with a USB cable. The last way you can connect MIDI is via Bluetooth. Again, the Bluetooth antenna is over here. Bluetooth is probably the most convenient way to connect and supports connections from iOS devices and even your computer directly into the Piano Disc Silent Drive HD2. So whether you're sequencing or recording your own performances or just want to play around with music you download from the internet, having a MIDI connection gives you a lot of options and lets you experiment with directly controlling the piano. Now that we know how to connect to the Silent Drive HD2, let's talk about two different modes of connection. One is standard mode and the other is professional mode. Standard mode is what most customers will choose. It's simple and easy. It can be as easy as a Bluetooth connection to Silent Drive that happens automatically. You play your music and the piano plays along. There's also a professional mode and professional mode gives you other advantages such as synchronizing an audio and MIDI file or even remotely placing your speakers in the room. But what method works best for you depends on what you're trying to do. Let's get into a little more detail about standard and professional modes and the various ways you can connect. The first standard mode audio connection I want to talk about is Bluetooth. And most customers will choose a Bluetooth audio connection simply because it's so easy. Just open your settings, select Bluetooth, and then select the PD Silent Drive BT audio device. Now you're connected. Once you've connected, when you're using the PD IQ app to play your music, it will play the piano as well as your accompaniment on the speakers. When connecting via Bluetooth, remember one of the limitations of Bluetooth is range. You need to use Bluetooth in the same room as the piano. And like any wireless technology, Bluetooth is susceptible to interference. So if you're having trouble or not getting the results you expect, don't worry, there's many more ways to connect. Another standard mode audio connection that you can use to connect your iPad to Silent Drive is AirPlay. Now, this is an example of an AudioCast device. An AudioCast device is a small adapter that has AirPlay technology built inside. What that means is that you can connect any iOS device directly to this as long as this and your iOS device are both on the same network. The advantage of that is higher audio quality and also wider range. Wherever you have your Wi-Fi network, you also have the ability to control the piano. Let me show you how to connect. On your iPad, simply swipe up to access the controls, then look for the music panel and click on the little antenna in the upper right hand corner. From there, you'll see all of your AirPlay devices and you can connect to the one you're looking for. If you're in the iQ app, there's another way to connect to AirPlay devices and that's through the volume control. In this case, I'll click on the volume icon and you'll see there's an AirPlay icon. Simply touch that and you can connect to any AirPlay device on your network. AirPlay is great because it offers high quality audio and a network-based audio protocol. What that means is you can operate an AirPlay device anywhere in your home or business. So make sure to add your AirPlay adapter to your home network. Don't create a separate network just for your piano. Now let's talk about professional mode. Professional mode differs from standard mode in that it has two connections to your piano, one audio and one MIDI. 
The audio is, of course, the vocals and accompaniment that accompany your piano performance, and MIDI is used to actually play your piano. One of the benefits of professional mode is the direct MIDI connection to your piano. It offers better accuracy and doesn't require any decoding on the part of the CPU. Another benefit is that with professional mode, the speakers don't need to be connected to the CPU board. In fact, the speakers can be Bluetooth and they can be placed throughout your room. In fact, there's many Bluetooth speaker options available on the market today, and they're all compatible with professional mode. With professional mode, the audio goes directly to the speakers and not through the CPU. Now, one of the things to know about professional mode is it does require you to go into settings in the IQ app and connect to MIDI before you use your app. And that's because the MIDI connection doesn't happen automatically. So with professional mode, you have the benefits of greater accuracy and better speaker placement, but at the same time, you need to remember to connect both audio and MIDI to your piano. To learn more about professional mode, there's another video available that covers the subject in more depth. Watch that to learn the ins and outs of professional mode. Silent Drive HD2 does have built-in Bluetooth MIDI and audio. However, we don't recommend using them both at the same time. We recommend that you select one, and if you're connecting via professional mode, the most logical choice is MIDI. So we recommend connecting iOS via MIDI to the Silent Drive HD2. Now, what do you do with audio? Well, if you have speakers in your home that are Bluetooth placed around your home, you can connect directly to those speakers. But if you don't have speakers that are wireless, you can use an audio adapter, such as a Bluetooth adapter or even an AirPlay adapter. These adapters are commonly available and they allow you to send audio independent of the MIDI. So you simply connect your speakers to the adapter and you're good to go. Now, regardless of how you connect to your Silent Drive HD2, it's important to realize that you can mix and match technologies. For example, you may have a Bluetooth wireless interface between your iPad and the Silent Drive, and you may have a hardwired audio interface, or you may choose to use a Wi-Fi audio adapter or even a Bluetooth audio adapter. Anything's okay, and any combination works, as long as you have only one audio input and only one MIDI connection. You can't use multiple audio inputs at the same time, nor can you connect multiple MIDI devices simultaneously. Now, let's take a look at some of the specific audio adapters that you can use to connect audio to your Silent Drive HD2. But keep in mind, technology changes often. So take a look at Amazon or call PianoDisc if you'd like recommendations for the latest devices that we recommend. An RCA cable can be used to connect your music player to the audio input of the Silent Drive HD2. The PianoDisc Bluetooth audio adapter receives the audio signal from your playback device and connects with a cable to the Silent Drive HD2. The AudioCast is a Wi-Fi AirPlay device that receives the audio from your iOS device and connects with a cable to Silent Drive HD2. The Airport Express, while discontinued, is still frequently seen in the field and is used in many installations. It receives the audio from your AirPlay device and connects with a wire to the Silent Drive. Similar to audio, there's many different MIDI options available to connect your Silent Drive HD2 to your computer, or your iPad, or your cell phone. Let me show you a few of them. But as with audio adapters, remember that technology changes frequently, so always take a look at Amazon.com or call PianoDisc for help in selecting the right device for your application. This is a legacy standard 5-pin DIN MIDI cable used to connect the Silent Drive to other musical instruments. This is a Roland UM1 MK2 USB MIDI adapter. This is a Kiko Sound MI1. This is the USB cable used to connect Silent Drive HD2 to your computer or iPad. So whether you choose professional mode or standard mode, Silent Drive HD2 offers a quick and convenient way to connect, with more connection options than ever before.